Hey everyone, Mike from vSwitch Zero here. So today I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Neckerware who did the, these awesome RTC modules. Uh, they're one of his many open source hardware designs and he, uh, he shares them out uh, for anyone to create. I uh, took a stab at soldering one of these up and I'm quite happy with, uh, with the results. Um, I don't have a lot of soldering experience, but I think that uh, it actually turned out quite well. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar with these chips, these uh, Dallas RTC uh, modules, as they're called, uh, used to be quite common in probably 486, late 486, early uh, Pentium boards especially, but um, you do find them in some older boards too. I've seen them in 386s. Uh, they're basically a uh, all-in-one design with several components sort of encapsulated in this plastic uh, material. So inside here you'll find a small uh, coin cell battery, there's a real-time clock chip, and also a crystal oscillator. So all of those three things sort of in this neat little package. Um, but the problem was that they, they soldered a lot of these directly to the boards. They didn't actually um, include sockets. Sometimes they did sockets like this, these dip sockets, and then you could easily replace these. But you know, some people like to save 20, 25 cents during the manufacturing, and uh, then you're stuck with a board that oftentimes won't boot if these are, are flat. So um, there's a couple things you can do. You can see this one actually has a date code of 21. I bought this one just recently. They do still make them. Uh, not all of the manufacturers still create these, but Dallas, I believe there's a company called Maxim now that uh, that bought Dallas, Maxim Integrated, and uh, they do still produce this particular model here. So the RTC uh, schematic that uh, Neckerware sh shared out is uh, actually for a benchmark chip. You can see it right here. I don't know how well that shows up, but it's the, uh, the benchmark uh, BQ3285. And there's a few different uh, suffix letters there. I'm not sure exactly what the ES stands for, but there are many different uh, form factors of these chips too. So you got to make sure you get the right one. The ES seems to, to be the, the correct uh, uh, form factor there that we need. And you can see the very small crystal oscillator on the back. And of course the, uh, the coin cell holder. So the CR1225 uh, fits perfectly on there. Some of them use the, the large CR2032s, uh, but I mean they take up a lot of space so to have a really neat little package like this the uh, small battery is perfect and really that should be enough power for this thing to last quite a while. Um, yeah so big shout out to Necroware and a big thank you as well for, for sharing this out. I think these uh, look just awesome. I'm really happy with how that turned out. So as I mentioned, you know, I'm not great with soldering. I don't have a lot of experience. I've done, you know, a few projects here and there. Um, I'd consider my skills as mediocre at best, and I still managed to do this. It probably took me about 10 times longer than it should have. I know that uh, if you were to watch a video of me trying to solder this up, it would be pretty, pretty sad at times. But um, I got there in the end. I just took my time and used a magnifying glass, and uh, I think it worked quite well. Uh, my hands smell like uh, flux right now. I probably used way too much flux, but that always helps uh, make sure that it works out well. I also just wanted to take a second to show uh, some of the uh, parts you'll need to put one of these together. So obviously you'll need to get your PCB created. There's lots of different places that do this. I used Osh Park for the first time for these, and I was actually quite, quite impressed with how they turned out. This is the normal purple prototype. Uh, PCBs they have uh, which look really nice but uh, I also did these they were the same price just took a little bit longer um, they are the after dark type and they've got a black uh, PCB with a clear mask on it so you can see a lot of what's underneath and uh, it's got a really nice uh, copper gold kind of thing going on there so this would actually look really nice in probably a brown colored motherboard like some of the A's boards um, yeah, so I'm happy I got those done too because I can, uh, can try that out. For the actual battery holders, you just need these little uh, 12 millimeter holders. I got all this stuff from DigiKey. It was pretty easy to find. Everything's in stock. Um, these are um, CR1220 or 1225 holders and you can see their surface mount. There's the two little tabs on each side that you'll, you'll need. Um, for some reason they're all brown. I was looking for black ones, but every single manufacturer seemed to have a brown one. So I don't know if that's just a standard or something, but yeah, that's okay. It looks all right. Um, also, these are the breakaway pin headers. 
they uh, just snap off really easily. Um, again, these are six millimeters in length, so a little too long for the standard uh, dip sockets that uh, that are used. Um, so you can either cut them or just push them through. I tried to cut a couple of them here, but I, I wasn't happy with it because it's kind of jaggy. So it's much easier to just push them through and then cut the top where you're going to solder them. So, so these are the benchmark uh, chips. So these are the BQ3285ES. And these are compatible with uh, what most boards require. If you have a DS12887 Dallas chip, then this is the one you want. Um, I did also buy a few of the uh, Dallas DS12885 uh, chips. They're really cheap on eBay. I'm still waiting for them to come from overseas, but uh, I'm going to try that out as well. They have the same pinout, so I'm pretty sure they should work just fine. And these are the little crystal oscillators. They're tiny little things, so be careful you don't lose them. And yeah, I just had to trim the legs a little bit before I soldered them on. But yeah, these are 32.768 kilohertz and six picofarads. So very easy, common one to find. They're very cheap as well, so no problem there. And of course the, uh, the dip sockets as well. Um, if you're going to go through the trouble of putting one of these in and have to desolder the old one, definitely install a socket if it doesn't have one. These are also very cheap. Uh, I mean, everything here was next to nothing. The, the Even the chips were only... These ones I got for, I think, $4 each, but the shipping was a bit expensive, even though it was from Canada, where I'm from. Uh, but the ones that I got coming uh, from overseas, the uh, the Dallas ones, I think I only paid $5 for like five or six of them. Just uh, be careful because there are knockoffs out there. If the price is too good and the writing looks a little sketchy on the, uh, the chips, just be cautious. Just make sure you get them uh, at least from a reputable place. Or if you are going to get them on eBay for cheap, just make sure you look at them very carefully and make sure that they look, look right. So as you can see here, this is the socket I soldered on uh, a few weeks back. Uh, it worked quite well with the the brand new Dallas chip, so I'm just going to go ahead. There's a little notch in the uh, in the design so that you can see the notch in the, the socket or the if you are going to solder it on, there, there should be a, a silk screen on the board that sort of indicates where where this uh, this side goes. You can see there's several pins missing as well, which uh, are not no connect pins. Depending on which chip you use, there is a, a BQ4000 series chip as well that some boards uh, require. If you look at uh, Neckerware's uh, GitHub page, you'll see some detail around that. And there are different uh, pins that you have to cut. I didn't actually cut them. I just pulled them right out with uh, with pliers, which worked fine. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and insert this. And I don't have standoffs towards the rear of this. So I'm just going to try and support it with my hand a little bit. There we go fit in there real nice. And the great thing about this design too is that if you look at it, it's really not any taller than the original RTC module. Uh, if you have a really long ISA card, it could interfere, but um, with the shorter pins that I uh, put through there, I think that uh, that works great. Uh, so this is a Pro Audio Spectrum 16, not the longest card, but uh, let's just see what happens because it does overhang a little bit and should go over top of the RTC and there you go yeah. yeah so you can see there's a lot of clearance there no problem there's at least a millimeter or two over the battery uh, holder so you could put a long ISA card in there no problem another thing you want to make sure you do too if you do swap one of these out you want to make sure that you clear the uh, RTC data so my board here has a little jumper right here to clear it so I'm just gonna short this for couple of seconds and then uh, that should be enough to take care of it. So I'll just uh, load the setup defaults here just uh, to be on the safe side and what we'll do is just set the date. I'll just set the year to 2022 and see if it sticks. And we'll just set one other thing too so I'll just do an, a hard drive auto detection here. All right, so I had the power cut for about 60 seconds or so, and yeah, the uh, the date held, and you can see the uh, hard drive settings are here, so I would call that success. I'm quite happy that uh, that, that worked out. 
So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And again, a big thank you to Neckerware for this and as many other open source hardware projects that he shares. Uh, you'll find a link to his YouTube channel in the description. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks again.